the cylinder and a plane. Make sure that default on default shading at the top, you've gone to display selected and that display selected with edged faces is selected. Trust me when I say this will make this much easier for you when you're working. So we're going to start off with the plane. Rotate the plane, put your angle snap toggle on and make it so that it is to the vertical 90 degrees. Change the tool that you are using to the select object tool. Trust me, <coughs> you'll be able to see what you are doing much better. And then zoom in so that you can see the top edges. On the modify tab, under the modify list, select edit poly. I'm just going to collapse that because I don't need that at the moment. Select the edge selection and then when you get the little crosshair where you roll over an edge click to select that edge once you've got the first one hold control down so that you can select the other edges make sure you have a crosshair before you click otherwise nothing gets selected now the top of this section is going to become the loop of our curtain that's going to hang around the curtain pole. Um, just while I'm doing this, while I'm recording, there may be an error message pop up. That's due to settings on this machine. You should not get this error message. I do, however, recommend that you save your work on a regular basis. So first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my select and move tool. And I'm just going to lengthen this top bit slightly. Once I've done that, I can select the extrude tool and I can start extruding to make a loop or a hook at the top. Make sure that the cursor changes to the one that you can see on my screen and then start extruding out to get a hook shape. Might take a little bit of playing around to get it going in the right shape in terms of where you're mouse is positioned and the way in which you move it. If it starts getting too small and you need it to extend, just grab your move tool and pull it out slightly. Get your extrude tool back, go to the edges and carry on. So now I have a loop in place as a hook. Right, we can leave that for the moment and we want to focus on our cylinder. Starting off with the rotate tool, it needs to lie down on its side. So 90 degrees, so it's lying down in the same direction as the curtain. Then move it so that it is in position to line up with the curtain. So that's just started coming through, so I'm going to want to stop it about there. Rotate around the object. You might want to zoom out a little bit for this. You might get away with working like I am here. And what you want to do is just line this up and then make it small enough by changing the diameter to fit inside the circle. I've just used the Y and the Z axis to do that. And I'm just going to move this in and up a little bit. So that is the curtain set up. doesn't matter too much that my rail's a bit big. <clears throat> so now I need to actually turn it into a curtain. So starting off with the modifier list again. And this time we want the cloth modifier set. Same as any cloth modifier object properties. Plain one, we want to set to a cloth. And I'm just going to set this to cotton, add objects, add our cylinder. Make sure that the cylinder is set to a collision object. Click OK. So that's our cloth and our collision object set off. Next step, the arrow next to the cloth, click to expand the cloth menu and select 
the group panel. Turn it round so you can see the front and select the top hook section. So they should all turn red. Click on make group and give it a certain, give it a, a name that you'll recognize. So curtain top, top of curtain. Then you want to go to surface, so surface down here and click your cylinder. So that hook of material will now stay on your cylinder. Selecting. So go back to the cloth. This time select your cylinder and you want to now make your cylinder, after you've assigned it, make your cylinder shorter. So I'm going to shorten this to probably about there along this X axis. Then when you press simulate local, your curtain should eventually move over and get faults. Once it's where you want it, press the simulate local button to stop the simulation and then set that as the initial state. I'm just going to zoom this out slightly so we can see the entirety of the curtain. Make sure that you've got both selected if you need to move all of this at once. So I'm just going to lift this up slightly so we can see. So now I have a curtain hanging all pleated nicely as if it was at a window on a curtain rail. Next step from there is to actually do the animation. Now for this, we want space warps, which is little wiggly lines. And we want the wind. So there is the wind. And there is my wind controller. First thing, at the moment the wind is blowing up, going to rotate it by 90 degrees so that it is blowing straight into our curtain. Obviously, depending on what way the wind is blowing when you're doing the animation will change how the curtain reacts. But for this demo, I'm just going to stick it here. You can stick it wherever you want. And just for ease, I'm just going to move it out of the way slightly. On the modifier tab, you've then got a whole different set of settings. Let's put a little bit of turbulence up there with a bit of frequency. I don't want too much in there. <clears throat> now, hang on. Here we go. Is that save error that I was talking about earlier? Now, if I click on here and we go to here and somewhere there is ah, self collision, turn self collision on there. Useful. And then select cloth forces. Forces in scene is only the wind. So we're going to add the wind into there and click OK. So now if I simulate local, there is my curtain blowing in the wind. To turn this into an animation, turn the simulate local off, reset the scene. Okay, don't reset the scene. That's supposed to set the initial state. But this time, we want to actually simulate. And that will process up to the number of frames that we've got on our timeline at the bottom. So this is doing an animation of this curtain blowing in the wind over 100 frames. So now when I go back through, you can see the curtain billowing in the wind that I've added on there. Once you've done that, obviously you repeat the process 
you can hide the cylinder and put in a full curtain rail going across.